If you search for the Berlin Marathon on YouTube, you'd find a lot of videos which talk about how fast and flat the course is. There'll be a lot of videos, a lot of vlogs which talk about PRs getting achieved and how wonderful the experience was. So this year, I really wanted to get a new personal best. And that's why I decided to run the Berlin Marathon 2024. And I did manage to get a new PR, a new personal best by over seven minutes. But along the way, I realized a few things which some of those blogs never told me about. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows on the day of the race. And there were some issues which I think I should have been mentally prepared for before the race. So today in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the lessons which I learned from the Berlin Marathon. Number one, the Berlin Wall. Well, I'm not talking about the historical monument or the historical element of Berlin. I'm talking about the waves of slow runners in Berlin Marathon. Well, I didn't quite understand how the corals were arranged at the start of the race. And I have a very strong suspicion that people with slower times were placed much ahead of me. The reason why I say that is because the only answer proof for people who run fast below 3 hours and 15 minutes marathon. So if you have a past record of doing at a fast pace of below 3 hours and 15 minutes, they will ask you to give a proof for that. But otherwise, you don't need to give any proof. You can just write down whatever timing you want on the registration and then get ahead in the chorus. So I put my timing of 3 hours and 23 minutes in my registration. But I realized later on that there were a lot of slow runners ahead of me. I was placed in chorus. D and I couldn't get ahead. There were waves and waves of slow runners throughout the race. So there was no point in time where I could overtake and get through at my pace very easily. Since I didn't find this in any of the vlogs or videos I watched about the Berlin Marathon on YouTube before the race, I was a little unprepared and I found it really frustrating. So I think if you're watching this video, you might be better off with the mindset that you will face the wall of Berlin when you're running the Berlin Marathon. The second takeaway from my Berlin experience was the blue line rush. Blue line. Blue line. The blue line. Blue line. Oh my God. Everybody talks about the blue line. I mean, if you want to get to the, the shortest exact marathon distance, follow the blue line. Well, news. Everybody has heard that advice and everybody is flocking towards the blue line. And especially if you're facing the wall of Berlin, nobody is going to give you any way to stick to the blue line. So that advice does not apply here. So if you have that in your consideration to follow the blue line for the race on the race day, I would say have a plan B because you won't get to follow the blue line throughout. Just try and stick to it wherever you get a chance. But otherwise, don't be too rigid because I ended up trying to stick to the blue line and trying to get through the crowd and it was not a very pleasant experience squeezing through people and shifting from one lane to the other trying to zigzag through the crowds so it was not a very good thing to do okay number three this one's a little disappointing because all the races that I've participated in, I found a lot of positive energy from the runners, a lot of good camaraderie. Berlin, I found it to be very frustrating. People were swearing at each other. It was frustrating because it's very crowded and we had 58,000 runners, if I'm not wrong, running on that day. And like I said, the chorals were also a little jumbled up. There were slower runners, there were fast runners. There was a guy who was trying to get through and this guy was just running through and he said, excuse me, passing through and then the other guy guy said sucker this is not the kind of environment that I'm, I really look forward to when I'm running. So I found it a little surprising. It's a little frustrating to see this kind of an environment among the runners. But I think the positive thing about Berlin is the crowd. There's a lot of amazing energy coming out from the crowd. The supporters are truly unbelievable. And that's something that you should probably draw your energy from instead of taking the negativity from some of the other runners. Not all runners, but some runners. I mean, some people can't take stress as well as others do. So that's, that's one of the things I think you can look forward to. Focus on the supporters, focus on the crowd outside the runners and do your best. Okay, the last one. This one, I think it's a lesson personally for me. Usually before the race, I take off my hoodie or whatever I'm wearing to keep myself warm just before the race. And then I drop it with the donation bags or wherever I can drop it. But in this one, my race was supposed to start at 9.15. So I took off my hoodie around 9.11 or so and then dropped it with the lady with the donation bag, donation bo uh, boxes. 
boxes and then I waited for the race to start and it started around 9.30 something and by then I was trembling. All the warm up that I had done was uh, gone. I was cold, shivering. So I think that's something that I should have known about before the race started. I should have probably kept it on till the time I saw the crowd moving. And again, it's a function of the number of people because there are so many people your wave does not start on a time it's supposed to. So I think if you are not used to the cold, like me, I mean, I'm from a warmer climate and I can't take the cold so well. So if you are from a warmer place, you'd be better off to hold on to your hoodie or to your sweater or jacket till the time you start moving towards the start line. So that's about it. That's the four pearls of wisdom which I gathered from my experience in Berlin. And I hope this has been helpful to you and I believe that every time we do something we carry out the good experiences and the bad experiences we treasure the good ones and we learn from the bad ones so this was some of the bad things but in general I'm still happy about the Berlin Marathon it wasn't as good as some of the other people's experiences like Nick Bester got a sub 220 and I saw his video and I was very happy for him a lot of good people got good numbers done it just didn't work out for me as well as I hoped it would have but i still got a pr and i'm happy about it so that's it that's it from me today that's all i'm going to talk about in this video i have already registered for the next race in april that's going to be the prague half marathon so it's one of the super halves it's going to be my second super half i first participated in lisbon which was in march this year 2024 if you think this video has been helpful to you in any way and you think that this kind of videos could help you in your future ambition in running Please do like and subscribe. I keep posting about running and I also keep posting about traveling after the runs. So please do like and subscribe if you think it's useful. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.